All right, guys, what does it take to seriously become a career investor? What do investors do all day, every day? They research, they think, and they build portfolios based on their highest conviction due to the amount of research and due diligence they have performed. Now, when it comes to the future of finance, which is a massive pivot that the world is going through right now, we are getting an upgrade to the financial system, an upgrade to the internet. What research can we provide, can we engage in to solidify our conviction when it comes to which digital assets we believe are going to play a very, very critical role in the new financial system. Now, you guys already understand this is an XRP based video. I do top down research approaches to figuring out how and which assets are going to play a major role in the new system. Now, I posted this today on X. We are extremely far beyond researching if Ripple and XRP are going to have a role in the new upgraded financial system. Now, we are engaged in learning about the ins and outs of the system to provide liquidity and live off the residual income from our digital assets. Now, residual income is the word I like to say instead of using the term passive income. Now, residual income means you have to do some work at first and then the fruits of your labor will start to come about. What does that mean? It means you have to do your own research. It means you have to get educated. You have to have conviction so you're not swayed back and forth in the market when you're on Twitter, when you're in the world and you lose the idea of what's actually going on. Yesterday's video, we covered the BRICS nations. We covered how much of the global GDP they are and their new payment system that is extremely interlinked with Ripple, right? Now, Ripple is extremely interlinked with the XRP ledger, interledger protocol, all using the digital asset XRP for its volume of liquidity and its market cap so they can shoot large payments through it. Now, when it comes to providing liquidity to live off residual income, that means that if you are a holder of XRP, you will have the ability to make passive income off of your digital assets, regardless if that is holding it at a bank that is doing the work for you, or if you're in a group like mine where we're actually learning how to do DeFi on the XRP ledger itself. Now, we've found some interesting research recently inside the private group uh, and one of them is coming from Generating Alpha Strategies for Thriving Across Crypto Bull and Bear Markets. And there is a clip inside of this video that I would like to show you really fast talking about providing liquidity. It says, providing liquidity and making markets revolves around aggregating data. We need market data to understand where to provide liquidity and where is the momentum and volume going to be? How do you go about selling a call option when things can, you know, <laughs> go insane on you? Yeah, um, and, and in some ways, like I describe our business in like the information gathering business in the sense that um, we're providing like principal liquidity to a lot of our counterparties. Um, so they are liquidity providers, okay? These guys are institutional liquidity providers they're doing it on DeFi platforms. They're also doing it on over-the-counter market exchanges. Okay, now he's going to explain how they choose where to provide that liquidity. You're going to want to provide liquidity where the volume and the attention is going to be. So if we're moving into a new financial system, where is the volume and attention going to be? This is the question I want you to rem I want to remain on your mind as we continue this video. And so 
the people that we want to trade with, um, obviously, you know, counterparties, firms that are considered like poor traders or bad traders, great. We're happy to take the other side. But we also want the smartest, um, best, most toxic flow that are in the market because that's the kind of flow that we can see and we can trade alongside of, right? And so in some ways, we're more than happy to provide a tight liquid market for the top, most toxic flow out there because knowing that information is way more, way more valuable than just trading like a coin flip, right? And in some ways, as a liquidity provider, that's the business you're in is you're basically building a community of like the smartest flow that's only trading with you and you have the information and you can trade around it. So you need information, right? Critical information that is going to give you a, 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 an edge on the market to understand where the flow is going to be. And what does he mean by flow? It means a large amount of volume. Okay, so what do we know about volume? We know that Ripple is going to be using Interledger protocol, using Prisma to route payments on the XRP ledger through the liquidity pools. And uh, so we would have to find out which liquidity pools are going to get this volume and how do we provide liquidity to those pools to capture the large share of revenue that is going to be generated from these uh, fees paid to the liquidity providers. And so we have to ask ourselves, since the XRP ledger is built as a decentralized exchange, it is built as a market infrastructure for foreign exchange, liquidity pairs, real world assets and multiple things. We can start to formulate our research on looking at which assets are going to be critical in these new DeFi ecosystems, right? So such as yield bearing stable coins like treasury stable coins, real world, real world assets that are in high demand foreign exchange currencies that are also going to be in high demand. This basket of currencies in this multipolar world, right? Because we learned yesterday in yesterday's video about the BRICS nations having and their new eight or so currencies that are going to play a very critical role in this. Are those going to be the currencies that liquidity providers can provide liquidity for and see a large amount of DeFi volume, a large amount of volume going through those liquidity pools? I would say yes. Right. And this brings me to this right here from Payment Infrastructure News. Central bank digital currency momentum is growing. The study shows a total of 134 countries representing 98% of the global economy are now exploring digital versions of their currencies. Now we know that there are leaders in the CBDC building race, Ripple, Stellar, R3, various other companies that are making sure all these systems are integrated and standardized. We all know that's what ISO 20022 is, the standardization of data rich messaging and the availability to have tokens flow on these rails. And so the question, like I said earlier, is not if Ripple and XRP are going to have a role in the new upgraded financial system, because we are far beyond that. Now we are engaged in learning about the ins and outs of the system to provide liquidity and live off the residual income from our digital assets. This is what is changing the global landscape for people like me or me and you. As you see here, this is the Atlantic Council Geoeconomic Center. These, they're the ones doing the study on the central bank digital currency tracker. As you see, all these countries right here representing 98% of, uh, of the global GDP are already in the works creating one. Now, the great researchers in the XRP community have been putting together this research for a long, long time now. And like I said, it's no longer a question if, but when. And so I'd like to gloss over some of the research by some of the XRP ledger community individuals 
such one such as smoke dog xrp plus the inner ledger protocol equals one trillion transactions per second this is a visualization of the world we're moving into if you could imagine ai payments every payment in the world happening and like brad garlinghouse has said this changes everything when you unlock payments by making them cost near zero you're unlocking the power of payments. We're going into a hyper-connected world where the amount of payments that are gonna be being made daily is going to look like the amount of likes on Instagram, the amount of likes on YouTube, the amount of messages and emails being sent every day. This is a great visualization for that. Interledger protocol uh, is a major part of this new infrastructure, along with Ripple Payments and Prisma, along with various other blockchains and payments companies that are going to be utilizing DLT and building out private, public, hybrid blockchains, standardized globally and harmonized into one internet of value, or as the Bank of International Settlements is calling it, the Finternet. So this is a great example to look at to see what's actually happening, what's coming. And if you see here, another one from Smoke, exactly how Ripple plugs into traditional financial infrastructure. So here is a document which says, and highlighted here, a blockchain as a service solution RippleNet to which traditional banks can simply plug in. Okay, so they're Making it this, making this very, very simple. We're not rebuilding everything from the ground up. All we did was lay new pipes and you can API plug and play to the new pipes with companies like Ripple, okay? Now, Ripple does not aim to replace existing relationships. Instead, Ripple simply plugs in to current systems, enhancing the settlement infrastructure of global payment networks as documented below by plugging in to RippleNet, traditional banks avoid the inefficiency and fragmentation of implementing blockchain technology in isolation. Ripple strategically collaborates with banks integrating their XRP-based solutions within the already regulated payment ecosystem, right? This is what we've learned studying the regulated liability network as well as they are finding that they can make the infrastructure regulated without having to re-regulate the entire system. This ensures a seamless enhancement of traditional financial systems without disrupting the underlying structure. So in doing so, Ripple not only optimizes the speed and cost effectiveness of global payments, but also ensures compatibility with established regulatory frameworks. This approach is key to driving the broader adoption of blockchain technology and mainstream finance. And that is exactly what we learned studying the RLN, the Regulated Liability Network. More plug and play documentation right here. Also, Ripple does not replace existing relationships, but instead plugs in to existing structures. Financial institutions that Ripple must continue to rely on bilateral agreements that they had in place before joining Ripple. And uh, Ripple provides only the rail on which payments move. So. This is extremely, uh, extremely critical for us to wrap our heads around. That way we can continue to gain knowledge and information on how this structure works so that we know where to provide liquidity. Okay, where to provide liquidity. All right. So when we're thinking about how do we want to move into the world after XRP explodes, where are we going to be providing liquidity? How are we going to be doing it? So, I mean, there are places like DexFi, right? This is their DexFiPro.com. Or, and you can start to look at the actual data on the XRP ledger, right? You can see the 24-hour volume, what's happening. And uh, the thing here is now, everybody should write this down, the most critical topics that we need to be studying at this moment, one of them being 
DeFi regulations. All right, so that's what we're going to start studying now. As we begin to study DeFi regulations, as we continue to build upon how this new infrastructure looks, we will gather a broader spectrum of understanding how and where and which assets we're going to be providing liquidity for. Now, in the private group where I have explored my portfolio and I showed everybody my portfolio, we talked about critical assets at the moment that are offered, right? One of my favorite ones, and I'll show you really fast. Uh, one second here. We can find it. Here we go. Flare. This is the XRP Flare pool. I believe in Flare long term. I believe in the asset XRP long term. And so Flare being an extremely sophisticated blockchain company or the Flare network, they, along with XRP being an extremely regulatory compliance company, this is a good bet and not financial advice that Flare XRP is a great pool to be a part of. Okay, so this is a long-term pool that we can feel comfortable providing liquidity for. And so this is how it's done. This is the boring work that nobody wants to do, which is getting used to researching all day, thinking, gathering information, aggregating data, like the gentleman in the video said, aggregating data so we can know where to provide this liquidity. Okay. Also, we have covered XRP uh, Ledger's push for its Web3 side. We cover that a lot on this channel. How there's going to be critical assets on the Web3 side from the EVM, custom EVM side chains with the XRP Ledger and Ripple X developers, companies, etc like disney creating a custom chain creating a coin and we could provide liquidity like that but that is going to come after DeFi regulations so we need to write DeFi regulations down and continue to study DeFi regulations so tomorrow's video will be all about DeFi regulations and how that is going to affect us as xrp holders so I hope you enjoy this. If you're looking uh, to follow along with my portfolio, all the links are, are below. You can follow along with my portfolio. I have an academy section here in the private group uh, that shows everything about the XRPL AMM, crypto due diligence, 10 topics to consider when doing due diligence, uh, all about DeFi, Let's DeFi, the easiest DeFi course online by, by far. Um, and yeah, so we're doing it all here. We're a great private community, right? And that's exactly what we do. We're all on in this together. We're all studying, researching, putting in the work. Uh, it's, this is a lot more than just holding the asset, right? It's one thing to gain some motivation on YouTube and then go and, you know, do your own research to buy an asset and hold it but if you don't continue the research uh you know you're going to start to be blown around by the winds of fud out there in this crypto world so anyways guys that is today's video like i said tomorrow we're going to start talking about DeFi regulations stablecoin regulations uh crypto regulations and in, in total Uh, these are the critical topics at this point. We are, are awaiting the bull run as well. Uh, it's just getting started. Altcoin season on the way as well. So my name is Andrew. Thank you for joining me today. This is the DeVilbus Capital Allocators channel. We're a private focus group of investors investing on the cutting edge. We're doing our own research out here. We're uh, getting ready for residual income. Okay. All right, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Peace.